This is Susan Bassey, and I want to take you on a First Amendment audit to California's secret courts. These are courts that are held in private business buildings, and these are courts that are required as a matter of law to be open to the public for public view, and yet there are no security guards and there are no screenings to pass through when you go to these secret courts, and I want to show you what they look like. I refer first to the need for far greater public information, and second, to the need for far greater official secrecy. The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. Hi. I am looking for, pursuant to California Rules of Court 2.834, I've spoken with Sheila Shonen, and I am looking for the list of all the um, private judging ca cases that you have in family law. I know Catherine Gallagher has done some, I believe Barbara Spector, and I'm looking for, according to the Rules of Court, that has to be posted, and I don't find any jams cases posted in the courthouse in Santa Clara, and yet I have found those cases in the file. So the JAMS website doesn't appear to have a list of the docket of the cases that you're hearing. Can you tell me how I would find those? Yeah, let me go ahead and grab um, the assistant manager real quick. Sure. And let me see if she can go Sure. Do you want some water? No, I'm great. Thank you very much. Do you want to have your name? Please? My name is Susan Bassey. Thank you. Americans are afforded protections under the First Amendment for speech and other rights. But the First Amendment also protects only one business, and that's the business of a free press. For publishers, for journalists, for producers, for YouTubers, for people who are conveying information to the public, that is protected. And this audit is a series that will show you the importance of those protections. doesn't guarantee the automatic making of copies and you shouldn't ask for copies automatically. The law allows and requires the inspection of records. The Chief Justice is a member of the UC Davis School of Law Class of 1984. Sworn in as Chief Justice in January 2011, she's the first Filipina American and second woman to serve as the state's Chief Justice. In recent years, the Chief has raised awareness about the unfair financial impact of fines, fees, and the bail system on the poor. Last year, she... When the Chief Justice studied law at UC Davis, I worked for the school newspaper. And back then, I believed that the public believed in both the courts and our news organizations. News organizations are the only private business protected under the First Amendment, and they are to provide true and accurate information to the public. In April of 2019, I noticed this article published in the Sacramento News and Review, and in it there was a quote from Justice Sheila Shonenshine about the cost of private judging. And Justice Shonenshine said that it was actually cheaper on families if they would use private judging instead of open public courts in order to finish their divorce cases. It was not my experience that Justice Sheila Shonenshine's numbers were accurate. She told me in a series of conversations and emails that we had that she got these numbers from a private CPA, Drew Hunt. I knew for a fact that Drew Hunt's numbers were incorrect. Service is basically providing private arbitration and mediation for dispute resolution. And the notion that uh, that could be made a business came to me after a series of events um, while I was um, 
Assistant Presiding Judge of Orange County Superior Court. State and federal law requires courts to operate in open public proceedings. Even when people in family law cases decide to use a private judge to settle some of their disputes, most of their proceedings are required to be open under California Rules of Court 2.834. And if these cases are removed to private attorneys in offices such as these, the lists still must be publicly posted so that the public has a right to know how many cases are being put before these private judges who are acting as a business. Hi there. Hi. I'm Hi. the business manager here. How can Hi. I help you? My name is Susan Bassey, and I'm doing an investigative story with the New York Times on JAM right now. And okay. my job is to collect the information. Okay. California Rules of Court 2.834 require that all cases before private judge. I began asking about these private judge cases back in 2015. And for my questions, I was called a sovereign citizen. I was sanctioned and fined nearly half a million dollars. I was evicted from my homes and my businesses. And I was retaliated against by the police and the judges who make these appointments for their friends who are lawyers acting in divorce cases. And it was these appointments that got the attention of the New York Times that asked for exclusivity on this story and asked me to do the research in 27 California counties to verify my work, which I did. And when I did, I began to face even more retaliation. And I became aware that the lawyers, the judges, and the police officers employed in the courts did not want me to investigate what was going on. Please on. stop recording. Right now, I am trying to do my job. Stop recording. I heard you. Okay. Stop recording. I heard you. California Rules of Court 2.834 require that all cases before private judging, if it's a family law case, I believe civil as well, under CCP 638 or 639 have to be posted in the courthouse and we're unable to find any of those cases posted in any of the Santa Clara County courthouses. And yet I have found several in front of Judge Gallagher and some other judges and I'm not finding the records. So they are to be open proceedings despite what everybody tries to say. And that, that is correct. Those, those um, cases are all originals are, are filed in the court. Um, and you then would they're not on the list. So Sharon Roper is not posting the JAMS cases on the list. And um, so the procedure is not only getting the qualifications under 2.831, oath certification and all of that, but then it gets sent so that it can be publicly posted so that people know how many JAMS cases are posted in the courthouse and I can find none. And I want to be able to, the proceedings are open and there's a procedure for being able to go in and see those proceedings. Do you know the name of the cases? I, I shouldn't have to, you're supposed to post them. Well, we we post them. It's but you've got to know the name of the cases, okay, like Berg, all of our Berg versus Berg. Catherine Gallagher did it. It was at Jams. I have the Jams agreements. It was never posted on a list. So I know that you guys aren't following that procedure, so that it's not posted, and therefore I can't ask for which cases I want to come did in. Did you when you go to the civil clerks division? Do they not have Sharon a, Roper? I'm looking at family law cases. Okay, so when you go to the family law division. I don't know how they list it. So, so, do right. you have the case number? So, I have done public records requests, and the procedure is you guys are supposed to notify them that you have the case. It gets pulled out of out of the public courthouse, and then no, we we the orders. So we do the cases here. Yes. And then the orders get filed back in the courts. I understand that, but what I'm saying is that the in the rules of court, when it gets removed from the public courthouse it's still an open proceeding under 2.834. And that means you guys are supposed to be listing, and I've spoken with Judge Shonenshine, and I've spoken with some others. There was an article printed in Sacramento recently about it, and you guys are still not posting cases that your private judges employed with JAMS or contracted with JAMS are hearing in the, case, in the courts. So I have found cases where I know there are JAMS judges. I've talk, talked to the parties. I have their JAMS agreements. I have the disclosures, I have everything. The step that is missing is the notification to the court that you have it. 
and I have seen other non-JAMS judges, attorneys, well, are now doing it. Is there a specific it. document you're looking for, like a notice of contact, or I'm... The, these are open proceedings, so when the case is pulled out to JAMS, you're supposed to keep a docket. I mean, it's under the rules of court. We can look it I, up if you'd like. No, I, we don't need to look it up. Well, JAMS doesn't post the cases you have. It doesn't we, post the, the dockets. Attorneys, the attorneys post it. The attorneys are given the orders, and they, the attorneys are filing it with the court. The so order is after the hearing has occurred. And when you're having a hearing for a family law case where a judge has been appointed under a voluntary stipulation or an involuntary. That's filed in court. That's fine. Yeah. I'm talking about everything that happens after that. Everything that, that happens after that is not secret. That's filed. Those are filed in court. Okay. So if there are confidential orders, then that you would have to contact the parties involved. Okay, that's not how it works. So I'm telling you, I've researched this for 27 counties. Okay, so, so he, I'm not, look, I'm not gonna get in a banter with you. What I can do is I can take your business card. I don't have one on me right now. Okay, I can so give you I my can, information and sure. I'll take yours. Do you have my cards here? Here's my card. Okay, so my name is Susan Bassey. B as in boy, uh -huh. A S S I. Okay. My email is gilroybassy at gmail.com. And you're with the New York Times, you said? No, I'm doing research. I'm doing the work on it with them. We started the story back in January, and I'm doing the finishing research for it. Oh, so you're not affiliated? I'm a contractor. With, with the New York I'm Times? An no, I'm not with them. I'm independent. I'm a freelancer. Okay. My phone number is 831. 320-6421. You're an independent freelance contractor working with the New York Times? I do. My work gets picked up by a lot of different people. Oh, so I I'm gotcha. doing the research, and yes, okay. I gave the New York Times exclusive on this story. Okay. They've done an arbitration story in the past, and this is related to private judging. I've done all the public records. And there seems to be some steps missing. Okay. And the step is where the cases are posted, the website. And if you look in the rules of court, it says once a case goes to private judging, the private judge is supposed to list that case on their website, including all upcoming hearings, not after the order is filed. Gotcha. So do you want to write that rule down? Nope. No need to write the rule down. Okay. I will elevate your request up. Have, um, we'll get back to you on an answer. Okay, great. Okay. And, and I have found irregularities with when there were JAMS cases. They're not posted in the okay. courthouse. So I'd like to know any time, in fact, Catherine Gallagher in particular, I know is being appointed by some of the judges and none of her cases are ever appearing on any of the lists that are posted in the courthouse. Okay. I do have those lists. I'd be happy to show them to you and show you what they look like. Sure, you can email it to me if you okay. like. Okay, I then, sure will. I'll yeah. email you the one Roper posted in 17 and 19. There were none posted before that. I started raising hell about it, and now they are being posted. But all of the judges that are being posted are not JAMS judges. Okay. Okay? Sure. Thank Got you. It. Appreciate welcome. it. So I, of course, emailed Miss Care and sent her the information I promised, and I'm still waiting for her to get back to me on her answers to my questions. And as Peter Shear from the First Amendment Coalition once said, if we're going to do our job to protect the First Amendment, we're probably going to need to be arrested. And so, Mr. Penfold, in protecting our free press and our First Amendment, that was lesson number two, and you have ten more to go.